I want to welcome everybody. I'm Eric Wall. I'm the director of the Berkshire Cultural Resource Center here at MCLA. And I'm so happy to be able to give you a preview before we open to the public um, our hostile terrain exhibition. And so we are fortunate to have all of our artists here tonight and we're going to get a chance to talk with them. But more importantly, we're going to get a chance to see uh, the work. So remember everybody, you know, you have the choice of viewing this however you like. I think speaker view probably is the best so that you can get the big view of the gallery, but it is completely up to you. Um, so I'm going to turn the camera around and get us started. Um, let's see. All right. So I'm actually going to turn it this way. Does that work for everybody? Can everybody see that? Okay, so this right here, there is one part of the exhibition, the part that started all of this, which is our map. And this is our map in progress. So I just wanted to give everybody a view of that. And those are just some of the toe tags out of the 1500 that we have that have been completed and put up. But I'm hoping those uh, students of Dr. Jason Dar who are interested, we did get the okay to have folks come in and help us to put those tags up. So let your professor know so that you can come and help us out with that. And hopefully we will get that done. But um, sorry, just kind of see how there's a grid that's made up here that has numbers that tells us where each of the toe tags go. And so our goal is to have that done by the end of the school year, right? Okay, so we are moving here. I'm just gonna give everybody a nice little view before I start. Yeah, it does, it looks beautiful, beautiful. So this is work by Sanctuary City Project. And I hope everybody's seeing the work on the floor as well, yeah. And I do think we are going to get to be able to open it to the public soon too, but more on that later. Okay, so I'm going to start us through, um, we're gonna start with Trin Mai's work and we're gonna walk down this wall and then I'm gonna head back so that we can talk about Sanctuary City Project. And then we're gonna go into the next room. Um, so, I'm sorry if I'm walking too fast or too slow, but Trin, would you unmute yourself and start to tell everybody about this first piece? And I am going to get a little bit further. So I squealed because <laughs> it looks so good. Oh, that text looks so good. Um, I love that the word afraid is directly facing um, that we should be heirs, which is the the pockets um, that you see there. I can't really see them because I'm Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit further. Um, so yeah, so now if we go to gallery view, then we can maybe, I don't know, let me, sorry, having issues here. Okay, now I can see. Um, so these, um, this project was inspired by fear really, um, and just thinking about um, the fear that has been um, disheartening um, immigrant refugee communities. Um, so I, uh, during the first iteration um, at San Diego Art Institute, I worked with um, a lot of refugee students um, and asked the community to write about their fears um, and um, bury them into the wall. So what you see there are little tombs. If you can zoom in, I'm not sure if um, some of the scrolls are already in there. So those are stones that May collected um, from the Husek River. Um, and they're, oh, <laughs> they're those little scrolls. So um, burying our fears so that we can kind of move forward in sound mind, because one of the dangers in during this crisis has been um, actions that are fueled by panic, right? We make horrible decisions. So a lot of immigrants have been, um, they've been swindled out of their money, you know, um, to various lawyers that are incapable of helping or unwilling or just like out to uh, take advantage of the vulnerable. Um, so, oh, I love that shot so much. And so the fact that it says, afraid, raid, 
and then just right across from fear not. <laughs> it's like, I love when that happens. Like, um, so that's what the, um, the project um, is about. Oh man. Oh, what a gift this is. So um, this is a portrait of my mother. Um, some of the portraits are ink on Vietnamese newspaper um, and joss paper, which is burned in prayer for the ancestors, um, acrylic, oil, um, and that was actually a box that, um, that I saved for years, I said manufactured in Vietnam. And um, I kept it forever. And then I had cut out that photo of my mom um, and the word ma um, is, means mother in Vietnamese. So I covered just a little bit of it so that it says ma cured in Vietnam. Um, and I, again, um, the synchronicities that happen when a show goes up, <laughs> um, that black, bold, capped font across from um, that wall. So yeah, so, uh, and then, you know, some of the work just starts being off um, experimenting. Um, so it ended up becoming a work of art, even though it was more just playing around with cardboard. There's something about working on paper that makes it a lot less precious that I enjoy. Um, and especially cardboard, because it's just like a piece of scrap. And then it becomes, it ends up becoming one of some of my favorite works because I'm totally free <laughs> to work um, and not think so much of a, about it being um, a successful work of art. So this piece here um, is, uh, it's also mixed media, um, charcoal on paper with hand embroidery there. Um, and acrylic paint. Um, so I start off drawing and then I just kind of paint around it and the stitching is like the last thing that comes. So there's that, that's a Vietnamese green finch only found in Vietnam. And it's kind of, it's trying to wrap these children up and pull them out of the wilderness. So these are our allies. Um, I can't even remember what that piece is called, but that's what it's about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, oh, okay. Uh, so this one is a little tricky to see. Uh, this is also about the allies. So there's, that's an American goldfinch, um, which is showing up a lot in my work too. And it's um, kind of hoisting this child up. Um, same material. This one's called, um, and we shall come forth as gold. And it comes from scripture um, that talks about even though we've been tried, um, so just thinking about what, you know, we ask, what is the purpose of all this suffering? Like, why does it have to happen? War should never happen. We know that, but it does because that's the world we live in. And uh, so just thinking about how this suffering, there's a potential in it, right? To reveal to us the truth, to reveal to us how much love we actually have for people. Because without the suffering, how would we ever know how, how, strong our fight and our will is to fight for those who can't. Um, so here is, uh, Erica, can we go back really quick? Um, is there an angle that you can get to reveal those invisible birds? So on the right panel, I've actually drawn some birds in charcoal. It's hard to see with the glare. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, but, as you move, so it's interactive in the way, oh, there's a tail and a wing. So if you move um, in a way, uh, in a certain, and the light hits it from a certain point, the birds are revealed. So thinking about all, oh, there she is. <laughs> so thinking about the way that these, so these invisible Americans, right? The farmers, the people who work in labor, these invisible quote in Americans, now all of a sudden are targeted. Like at once they were like invisible, nobody wanted to like really pay attention or I don't wanna say nobody, some of us did not wanna pay attention. Now all of a sudden they're being targeted. So I, I liked that idea of the birds actually appearing and disappearing. So also thinking about people who are going and hiding um, and then they have to emerge, right, when it's time to fight their case or to appear in court, and then they go back in hiding. 
So um, that's uh, part of the work there. And then those little crosshairs, those little embroidered crosshairs. Um, I mean, the cross represents a lot, right? So faith, but also in this piece, um, the fact that they are targeted. So you have these crosshairs that are aiming just right at the heart of the birds. Um, yeah. Thank you, Erica. Sure. Oh, I love the reflection of the text over that too. That's so cool. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, so this, oh, you got the dirt. <sighs> Amazing. Okay. So this is my newest piece. The only work that I finished in 2020. I, I gasped when I realized that. Um, it's a charcoal portrait of my husband, life-sized. Um, and um, these arrows here were made with all found objects. So found um, branches, found feathers, found string. And I did a lot of research to, um, to uh, develop, produce them, create them um, using indigenous methods. So I actually like straightened these branches in water and then over flame. Um, I chiseled them. I, these are all found feathers. So I had to fletch them and wrap them in this found string and then like soak them in wax and then melt the wax. It was like soaked them and um, kept them in cornmeal like the natives did to kind of do away with like the mites and the bacteria and stuff. Um, just brilliant. Like it's just the most simple way of doing things that is just so effective. So what I loved about this piece is it started off, so there's a, an American goldfinch on his head. There's a um, silver breasted broadbill on his shoulder that's native to Cambodia. So my, my husband is Vietnamese, Cambodian American. And then there's that Vietnamese green finch on his arm. Um, and it started off with our story, right? So we've been dealing with this for <laughs> over 20 years now. And then it kind of expanded, right? So then in, I, when I started fletching the arrows, um, I began thinking about like this mass genocide that so many peoples have suffered through. So it starts off very personal and then it just kind of like opens up to humanity and like what we're, we've all been fighting for, for like from the beginning of time, right? This is like wars have never stopped. Um, that uh, mound, so in a certain angle, I don't know if you can get into the angle right where here. he's actually standing on the mound. Oh, so close. <laughs> Thank you. I don't expect you to like lay on the floor or anything. <laughs> um, but so from a certain angle, um, he'll stand on that mound. And um, the um, idea is that like standing on a mound of rocks or dirt, it's very unstable, right? And that is the climate that we're living in right now. So everything's shifting underneath us and then laws are changing and then laws are implemented, but they're being ignored. and it's it's constantly shifting so how do we find sure footing in it we do this work <laughs> that's why we do this work so we can remember what we're fighting for <laughs> um we can keep the people that we're fighting for in our hearts um we can keep the faith that drives us and sustains us and so he and standing there very confident but gentle and then you know standing upon this kind of like unstable surface um, and then the arrows are um, puncturing, actually puncturing the drawing. So it was inspired by Psalm 91, um, which is like a prayer of protection. So um, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. So that terror by night, a lot of the raids happen at night when people are most vulnerable, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. So we are being targeted, right? But we we stand in hope that we, this shall pass. Um, so it's kind of drawing from that strength um, that faith can give us, faith in other people, faith in our allies, faith in our own strength. Um, and, you know, just asking like, what is it that we can, how is it that we can sustain each other and ourselves because the fight is exhausting. I mean, we're so blessed to be able to make the work about this because that's how, right? I mean, I, that's how we sustain our own sanity. 
by making the work, um, you know, so uh, it's just, you know, asking that question, like, how do we sustain ourselves um, during these times? Wonderful. Thanks, Trin. Okay, so we're going to talk to Trin a little bit more. Um, it's so lovely to hear her talk about the work. Um, so I'm going to head back here. And so we're going to see um, a little bit more. And I'm going to go back to the beginning so that Chris and Sergio can tell us a little bit more about um, the work that they've put in here. And then we're going to also go into Design Lab to see more of their prints, but also to see the prints that uh, Melanie Mowinski's class put together. And we should say these are our gallery windows that have all of uh, Sanctuary City Project's posters in them. We get a lot of people stopping and reading and all that good stuff. So we're really happy about that. Okay, Sergio and Chris. Um, would you tell us a little bit about um, the choices you made for the work that you put in the exhibition and um, even even the placement? I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how excited I was to know that we were going to have vinyl on the floor. It's awesome. Uh, thank you, Erica, and thank you, Trina. That was a beautiful presentation. Uh, Chris, I'll start. Is that okay with you? Um, so what 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 are you looking at that that uh, that that um, phrase undocumented and afraid? That's uh, that's one of the uh, responses that we have collected in the last four years. And as you know, the uh, the project has to do with uh, calling response. So we 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 have a question. People have answers, and sometimes they have uh, also questions. So this is an ongoing conversation with different audiences from you know, gallery goers to, uh, to uh, elementary uh, school, uh, school students, high school students, college students, uh, natives, you know, uh, immigrants and uh, refugees. So, um, so far we have collected 45 uh, original responses out of 2,500 uh, responses that we edited uh and then they became posters um i believe last year looking at this phrase undocumented and afraid i uh started moving words around or or just like letters around and playing with that particular response i think undocumented and afraid is a is a, it's a phrase that you've seen quite often in rallies and protests around the country um and uh so we were trying to change its meaning somehow. And uh, so we created these uh, uh, eight different phrases that go from undocumented afraid all the way to undo men. And I think we're missing one phrase at, at, the, at the end. Uh, but you know, all, all, the, all, the, all the words that, that, that are part of this phrase, like raid and document and undo and men and afraid are, uh, um, Kind of like uh, words that inform uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, legal status of uh, a lot of uh, uh, immigrants in this country, and also experiences that uh, Trin was talking about, like rapes and um, and being afraid, and and uh, you know how, what do you do, right? And and I think that you're right, uh, Trin. We we that's what we do. <laughs> we make art. We, we we keep we keep a record of uh, of uh, the, the the fights and the struggles that we that we're going through. Yeah, I mean, I think the to follow up on that too, the breakdown of the words is in direct correlation with what we've seen, and you know, with the U.S. government's um, um, on take on 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 uh, immigrants and undocumented immigrants in this country, and um, that has to do with raids, and that has to do with men being men and women being afraid, and um, that has to do not only with the Obama administration, but the Trump administration, where we were seeing towards the end these mass raids in different states and cities across the country. Um, and it also goes back to the undocumented worker being an essential worker during the, um, you know, during the pandemic for the last year and a half now. And um, um, the lack of support and the lack of even federal aid to even come back to, to the undocumented worker uh, in this country through the Trump administration, through the federal government. And so, 
I think it has a couple of different levels to it, not only during COVID time, but also during past administrations, even going back to Clinton. I mean, what we're seeing with, um, you know, Clinton and Bush, I mean, the raids that have taken place in this country, which are in high, high numbers, so. Yeah, and then you have the the, uh, the uh, vinyl on the on the ground, the undocumented are afraid. It, it, it's the same word. I just playing with the uh, with, with the floor itself, and uh, I'm sure you remember last year, Black Lives Matter. They they, they had a, 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 a several uh, streets in the in, in, in United States. You know, in Washington for sure, a huge street was renamed Black Lives Matter, and and they used a very similar strategy uh, as this one here that they basically wrote down on the ground, Black Lives Matter. I believe it's the same font, uh, same color, but in this case, it's much smaller. But, you know, once again, just looking at what people are doing uh, in the streets and bring it back to the gallery. Okay, we're gonna head into- uh, Erica, Jack is in the waiting room. Just oh, so you okay. Know. Um, let's see. So okay. At least one Somebody's person. Just wanted to let you know. Thank you. Somebody, somebody, somebody. That would be my husband. Is going to let him in. <laughs> okay. So we are in Design Lab, and more work by Sanctuary City Project. I'm going to go to each of these projections to kind of catch. And I don't know if Sergio or Chris, you want to talk a little bit about these. Chris, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so um, <clears throat> one thing that to give people context is this project has been going on longer than four years. It's been going on for started, I think, almost 11, 12 years ago now, if I do the math in my head really quickly, maybe a little longer. But it started off as a research project and um, as a way for us to learn and gather information, both, both from periodicals and texts and nonprofits. Um, but also with the public and, and our audiences and participants. And so the timeline started off as a vinyl piece um, uh, at the gallery originally at Queens Nails Annex in 2009. And now it's morphed into a digital format that you're seeing now um, where there's layers of information being, being, um, being sent to you here. Um, not only numbers, but policy, um, people's words, people's actions. Um, if I, it's hard for me to see, but those are apprehensions right there that you're looking at. We have border crossings and our, our starting place is always from 1989. That's when San Francisco became a sanctuary city and 13 cities became sanctuary cities in the US. And so that's always our starting place. And the timeline is continuously growing till now. So it's a living and breathing document. Um, I think the last piece we added in for this one goes all the way up till uh, right, right till the end of two, uh, 2020. So, um, you know, you're seeing a revolving, revolving uh, slides of numbers, acts, policy um, that has kind of formed and informed where we are right now. This is um, some is doing remittances. We did some work with remittances this time as well. And so there's layers of information in this to kind of paint a picture of where we are and where we came from um, with, the, with uh, this work. Sergio, you want to add to that? Yeah, that this is a timeline where where that that people engage with when they come to the gallery and uh, and uh, and we 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 print in with the public, so they get exposed to all this information and uh, people respond to it either you know questions or or uh, answers, and uh, it is a lot of information. It is like like Chris said, 1989 to the present, like 31 years of information. Um, that it goes from different administrations, you know, Democrat, Republican, uh, and uh, so, so so you understand how complex the issue is. It's not one party or the other. You know, you you cannot blame the Republicans for A, B, or C, or the Democrats for D, E, F. You know, it's kind of like a, an, an ongoing struggle that that nobody seems to uh, really take care of. And uh, I think that by exposing all this information, it's like unveiling, you know, our our, our uh, most sources and resources in this project. And hopefully, you know, we have a meaningful conversation with people. Uh, sometimes people get very upset because they do feel like, you know, they're coming to my country. And I, 
people believe that you know this idea of uh, uh, you know the, our nation is kind of like an old idea that doesn't play well anymore, especially when you know uh, borders are collapsing and people are moving more and more um, around the world. So uh, yeah, this is uh, you know an ongoing struggle with audiences uh, in this project. Actually, I think we turned the lights down because it was easier without the glare to see the um, the floor vinyl. But again, this is unafraid. It looks it looks so small in there. It's huge. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, don't look at our floors. We need to work on that. Okay. Yeah, and then the posters we have, I believe we send you 45 different places. Mm -hmm. And again, we have collected 2,500 responses. Uh, and we edit the responses to what you're looking at right now. And uh, we, we're using Helvetica, which is a very common font that uh, you see pretty much everywhere that you see a sign uh, in this country in the streets, street signs. Um, and then we're breaking down the uh, uh, the phrases into like, you know, almost like a foreign language. Uh, English is my second language, as you can tell. And uh, so, you know, when I read English, that's the way I read it. It's kind of like a what? So it, it takes me a while to understand what I'm reading. And I wanted to get, like give you that experience, right? To like, even though it's your language, uh, your native language, what happens when it's, breaking, it's broken down like this and hopefully, when you read it, you'll say it, right? You, you just don't read it. You kind of like a, read it twice, three times, and you're like, oh, I'm saying something. Um, and then this is the classes that I, uh, Chris and I taught or uh, um, assisted. Uh, Chris, want to talk about these? Uh, those look really beautiful. Yeah, that was really wonderful. I, I got the honor with Sergio to help work with um, Melanie's class and Anna's class. And um, it was a really wonderful experience. Um, and to be able to pull out some of these um, stories and uh, family stories in such a short period of time. I mean, we were only really working about three to four classes with the students. So it was a really truncated period of time, but you know, having them think about where their families came from and how they ended up where they did in, the, in, a, in America, or let's say Massachusetts, or for some students, Connecticut, or for another parent, New York. Um, how did they get there and where did they, why did they come here, right? Why did they come to the US and to America? And we had them talk to family members. We had them do um, research online and through periodicals to kind of um, think about these experiences, not only with their family, but other people's experiences. And then from there, create pieces, printed pieces. As you can see here, this is Melanie's classes. And Melanie has this really beautiful technique of printing that she shared with the students to illustrate and bring some of these um, students' family stories to life. And so these are their interpretations um, that they printed multiples of um, over the course of the end of the semester to um, not only be included in the show, but also hopefully to give to other community members and to possibly do a wall too they were talking about. So um, it was a real honor and pleasure to be a part of Anna and Melanie's classes. And um, I think it's a really great addition to the show. Hey, great. So this concludes our walkthrough. I'm gonna head back to um, my desk. And I think at this point, if we have any questions from any of our um, guests, this would probably be a great time to start to either put them in the chat or um, raise a hand and we will definitely answer those. So, yeah. I just wanted to say that the installation looked really wonderful and thanks to everybody who made this possible and um, to May and Erica and Trin, the, the work looked really beautiful. So thank you so much. It, it, it was nice. We just, we, it, we knew it was up, but we had no concept or we had a concept, but it's, it was nice to see it all together and um, finalized. So that was, that was great. Thank you. You're muted. You're muted. No, I, every single time. 
So thanks to you, to all of you, um, for the beautiful work and, um, and for also engaging with our students and for um, engaging in conversation with us. Um, yeah, I think it's been amazing, even, even despite a pandemic. <laughs> I don't think that that's what we anticipated was going to happen when we started all of this off. I think tonight was supposed to be when Chris, Trin, and Sergio were here and we were having an opening and all that. Yes. But when everything is clear, when we all do what we're supposed to do to make it better, then we'll all come together. But um, again, I wanted to thank all of you and I wanted to thank our installers. Shartan and Sherwin Rio, who put all of that up <laughs> basically by himself with the help of me, Beatty. So thanks to them. So what what sort of yes, what sort of questions do we have um, for folks, either in the chat or um, just raise your hand? While we wait, can I make a comment? Um, I, I mean, I, I'm. Oh, there's a hand. Never mind. I'll put that on hold. <laughs> there's three hands. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, Trin, see what you're gonna say, and then I'll ask my question. Oh, I um, no, I love how the work comes together. I mean, we have this idea, and yes, it was mapped out, but the way that the work converses with each other is just so amazing. I mean, like from the students' work to Sergio and Chris's work to my work, um, those are things that there's like, we knew that there was this like conceptual conversation happening, right? Like it just made so much that sense. And thank you for seeing that, Erica, that we should be showing together. But to see the way that everything is planted, um, like it's, it's difficult to plan something like that. And I feel like that's when art transcends itself, right? There's like these visual connections that happen. That's just like really beautiful. I'm so excited. So thank you. Of course. Of course. Anna, did you have a question? Yeah, well, I, I wanna say first of all, that I just to, to concur with what everyone's saying, um, it, it really, you know, having, Having started thinking about this project two years ago, um, and then, you know, just to see it come to fruition and Erica, like, it really, it, it's, you are the person who have made this happen um, and brought all these, all these things together. And I just, it's just amazing. Um, it's really, really phenomenal. And the, the work really does speak, uh, all the different pieces speak to each other in really unexpected ways, even though we knew it was supposed to con converse, right? But then it, it's like, oh, it's like a revelation, right? Um, and so anyway, so I wanted to say that. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to say was, or I wanted to ask a question. I wanted to pose a question. I have questions, um, but I, want, I wondered if Trin, just for, you know, to some extent, I think I know the answer to this, but um, just for everyone else's benefit, could you talk a little bit about the significance of birds in your work? Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I, I actually hadn't realized how much <laughs> I paint birds. This one's really tired, y'all. Like that one's just exhausted. <laughs> it actually started being a dead bird. And then when I painted the eyes, I was like, oh, no, she's still got life in her. She's just really tired. Um, but yeah, birds like representing migration and liberation, right? Um, and it was so special to be using their actual feathers because I was like holding on to these feathers and it took everything in me to even cut them to make those because I'm like, they were so precious. Um, and just thinking about how far these feathers have brought these birds. And it's not just one feather, I mean, they're covered with feathers. Um, and I actually found an owl, <laughs> which I needed more feathers and then I was provided with an owl. It was pretty amazing. But um, just observing and studying the different feathers, right? So you have like the down and then you have like the flight feathers and the tail feathers and they're all different shapes and thinking about all of these feathers come together for the sake of these birds flight. <laughs> you know, it takes all of them. And so that was really significant. Um, but yeah, the birds, I just maybe a year ago I started really um, painting the Vietnamese greenfinch and the American goldfinch and um, to represent like the Vietnamese Americans who are, are suffering through this crisis, withstanding this crisis, sustaining and enduring this crisis. Um, 
Uh, but yeah, it's about like flight, right? So they, they migrate, they find homes in different places. There are some birds that will, that create their own nest, but then there are some birds that will share a nest, right? So once one family of birds fledges and moves out, a totally different species of bird will come and nest. And it's like, that's, that's what we do. We go to where the resources are. It's natural for us to do that, right? Um, we want to be by water and in rich soil um, where we can live and make a life. <laughs> so yeah, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, a lot of them are in flight, although I don't know why uh, there's like another there's a couple birds that are struggling in the studio right now, but most of the ones that I think, yeah, the, the ones on Hien's portrait are at rest, which is nice. There's a season of rest, right? There's a time for fight. And I was just talking to my husband about this. Um, you know, there's, there's a time to fight and then there's a time to flee. But fleeing is not necessarily weakness. We have to flee sometimes to preserve our strength to fight to fight another day. Um, and we were really talking about that. I'm interested in that too. Um, but yeah, these birds are hopeful for me because uh, they're always on the move. <laughs> they're always on the move um, in search for something. And I think we should all be in search for something, right? That's what gives us cause, you know, or adds to it. Um, so one question is, what has been the most surprising or unexpected reaction that you've received from your works? I think that's for everyone. I can, I can uh, try and respond to that. Uh, uh, this is, uh, this iteration of the project is four years old, so 2017 to now. So uh, it has been seen by many people. Um, so again, elementary school students, all the way to seniors uh, in San Diego, all over the Bay Area, Seattle, Texas, and also in Massachusetts. So you, you get responses from, from different people and also from different institutions, right? Whether it's museums, galleries, curators, directors, uh, funders. So I don't know which one you wanna hear. What, 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 which one do you want <laughs> institution, funder? audience, a young one, an old one, <laughs> you, tell, you tell us, we'll give you an answer. But what's yeah. one that surprised you that was like... Well, they're all surprising, right? You, are because, they? Like, well, yeah, of course, right? I mean, going, going to a, a Italian-American school, uh, uh, elementary school, all the kids were ready for us, you know? They, that was surprising. I was like, what? What are you guys talking about the wall for? You know, talk about Trump, the wall, you know, migration. And these kids, you know, they speak to languages at home. They have a place they go to the summer, you know, and they get on a plane every year. And, uh, and uh, so anyhow, you know, so that was, for me, also, I was not expecting that from that uh, young age. Mm -hmm. So institutions, yes. <laughs> uh, I, had a, I had a studio visit last month at, from New York. I won't tell you who came. And, uh, and then, you know, I, I show them a body of work and then I show them the sanctuary city and they told me that it was a very San Francisco project, that it wouldn't make, it wouldn't make sense in New York or in the East Coast, right? And I was like, well, it's in Massachusetts now, you know, it's in Texas and it's in New York at an archive. So I've been there before. And it was surprising because I, it, the more that we show the project in, in different places and also other prizes, projects dealing with migration, no, no matter whether it's Italy, in South Africa, you know, in Argentina, in Alaska, you know, it's like you get very similar responses. You know, you get very similar responses. People that are moving in and people that are tired of them moving, you know. So I, I, I was surprised and I told them, so you think that Black Lives Matter only makes sense in Oakland? And she was a black person. She's like, no, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, it's like, uh, that was for me very surprising, you know, coming from someone that has that much power and understanding of, uh, of like, you know, political movements that transcend borders to come up with that. For me, that was very, very surprising. Yeah. 
that tells a lot about how we how we perceive or don't perceive the world holistically you know i think that was what i was concerned about with this project would how are how are our how are our community members and our students going to be able to relate to this but it is very relatable but you just have to show them because people assume that it that it isn't which is why um you know, i think it's it's interesting when when uh when you hear that i guess you're never surprised then <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, they are suspicious of Californians. They're New Yorkers, of course. They're New Yorkers. I mean, that that that, that West Coast East Coast mentality is still there, <laughs> <laughs> especially in the arts. <laughs> These darn New Yorkers. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yes, we are very suspicious of California. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> Don't pay attention to that <laughs> now. Tonight. <laughs> and so, in turn, you said for those whose minds have been changed through the work or have considered an alternative alternative view from what they previously believed. Yeah. Yeah. And I think this work really speaks to, you can see in when people look at your work, all, all three of you, there's an immediate reaction. You can see something processing. You know, it's not just about the aesthetics. It's, it's, uh, it's about what, um, what Sergio just described that people say that they're thinking up here and trying to figure out what all of that means. Um, I think it's really interesting to see. Um, do we have any other, other questions? Anna. Yeah, so um, I wanted to uh, ask, so Sergio, when you were talking about how you designed the posters with the words sort of deconstructed, um, I love that idea that it's um, kind of um, making the language strange. Um, like we say in anthropology, you know, make the strange familiar and the familiar strange. So we try to, what I try to do with my students um, so I like how you're making the familiar strange, but when I look at them, it makes me think, okay, so I'm not an English major. I'm not, that's not my thing is like literary analysis, but it makes me think of poetry and how the lines of poetry are can in some, some styles of poetry can be um, deconstructed. And I was wondering whether you, you folks had thought along those lines when you had been um, designing those posters. Yeah, I I, I, love, I I love poetry. I do read poetry, and uh, at the beginning I was not thinking about that, uh, and then I started thinking about that the Dadaist, you know, the Schwitter's poems that were kind of like a, almost like songs, you know, uh, concrete poetry as well that is pretty old, but also they look at the shape of the uh, of the words themselves. And also E. Cummings, right? I mean, he he would do something like that. John Cage, you know. So it is a, it, it is an old tradition of of uh, you know artists playing with words. So definitely, yeah, poetry for sure. Yeah, I, you know, as as when I was when I was younger, I would write poetry <laughs> and write songs, not make posters. But yeah, totally. But I think poetry informs what I do. I you know I I I would like to believe that there are poems, but only you and I know now. So that's really interesting too, because the it's like in his portrait, the psalms were written to be sung <laughs> as well. So the fact that it's like across from like these songs. And I love what you said, Anna, about like how it looks like poetry. And it really does. And I, I feel like that deconstruction is almost it's really um illustrative of what you're doing like we're taking this very complex idea of immigration and we're breaking it down into the essentials people are dying children are in cages people are at the border they're suffering they're escaping persecution like it's it's it is that simple so the fact that you're taking these long multi-syllable words and breaking them down to simpler forms so that we can kind of digest them because it's such a heavy subject matter um and uh 
Yeah, and it also speaks on when I was, when Eric was scanning um, that wall, it made me think about law, right? So like the way law is written, stamped, it's like officially law, but then, you know, the regime is um, deciding which laws to read and which laws to do away with, which laws to ignore, which laws to add, to contradict or to override other laws. So law is so such a fluid thing. So you have this kind of like th -th 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 happening, this visual thing that's happening on the wall, but that's also how these people are fighting their cases, right? It's like, okay, uh, we're going to use this law to fight the case and then something changes. And then there's somebody, there's like something else that's added to it. And so it's a constant flickering and moving. It's almost like, like the, the light that you're supposed to focus on. It's like one of those eye tests where they have like that red light and you, you're supposed to follow or like see it from your peripheral or whatever. And it's just like this constant moving thing that we're trying to chase. And that thing we're trying to chase is freedom, but it's moving, like the target <laughs> is, is moving. So I found that really interesting too. That's what it made me think of when, um, yeah, that entire, that entire span of wall. So cool. Yeah, that that's an interesting in interpretation because one of the first iterations of the undocumented, unafraid, breaking it down was actually a, a video piece that we made that um, started off with the whole phrase and then it would break down into men raid, then it would break down into men a or do men aid and you know all nine, ten different phrasings and it sped up over time. So it started off at a nice rhythm like this and then it would eventually get a little quicker and a little quicker and a little quicker and then almost like these pulses. So yeah, that, that's a pretty cool interpretation. That was like one of our first ways of interpreting that, that phrase, so. We have another question. Um, I guess it's kind of a little bit for, for all of us, but in different ways. What challenges did you face when addressing the gallery, itself, the gallery space itself and how the artwork looked? So I think this was a little different in that we're all in different places. So um, fundamentally, it, it, it was about Sergio and Chris, this is, this is where we'd like you to create some work for this space. Trin, this is where we'd like you to create work for this space. Um, you know, we had talked a lot about the, I, you know, the idea behind it. So I think um, maybe you can speak to how challenging or not that was when you're not able to actually visit the space in person or just use it based on, you know, um, uh, a layout of the, of the, uh, of the gallery. The, uh, the, well, the, there are two things, right? The, the, uh, the, uh, our project is interactive. So there is a printing component. So we would, would have brought three tables to the, uh, to the uh, gallery and, uh, and uh, we would spend days with the, with the public uh, talking about the project, talking about immigration, you know, making posters and whatnot. So that didn't happen. And then the other one is like not being at the gallery itself, right? Not, not experiencing the space itself. I think that when you do installation art, it is very important that you're there because you're basically responding to the space. So, you know, this is our one, two, three, four, fifth, like fifth time that we installed this, uh, uh, this uh, installation and it, it always changes and it changes based on, on, on the space itself. And uh, so this is the second time we don't go to the space, Texas first and then Massachusetts. And, and that is challenging because it, I, you know, we, I, I, I love uh, going to the galleries. I love, you know, being there physically, you know, I loved uh, working on the installation. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm like Martha Stewart. I want to put up colors everywhere. So that didn't work this time. So that was very challenging, definitely. Yeah, I mean, the whole process of working inside of a gallery space and institution is so relaxing and just so, it's what I love the most about all this, the conceptualizing of it, and then actually getting to work in the space and getting to meet, work with Erica in person. And then after that, getting to work with the audience in person and like getting to talk with people and you know, people taking in the, the, the timeline video and then we're printing with them and having deeper conversation. And I really do miss that. And so um, 
that that's been a challenge. I mean, we we have a show with Sergio said installed in, in San Antonio that came out really beautiful too. And they're starting to open up in a small capacity. And um, you know, I, I'd love to go down there maybe before the end of the show just just to get that interaction again if there is is, is an opportunity because that's what really you know drives this this component of the project. Um, I know in Palo Alto, we have a show in Palo Alto right now, and they're going to start opening up to limited capacity, uh, hopefully by next week. So we're really excited about that. And I think we're, we're going to be going down. I, I'm going to be going down, I think, hopefully Saturday to start printing with one of the, um, another artist we're working with down there. Um, so stuff's happening. We are starting to open up a bit and um, it will, it will be, a, I just can't wait for it. I think it'll be really wonderful and wonderful for the project. So. Yeah, for me, I felt like um, working remotely, I felt like more of a drafts person. <laughs> I mean, I was making the work, but then I was like sending you these like maps, like where the pockets would be when normally I'd walk into the gallery and I'd have these little templates and I'd just stick them on the wall and see what feels balanced. And I had to work on a wall this big, right? To kind of like map it out. So that was really challenging too. Uh, I, I mean, we're all like, tactile and visual <laughs> so um yeah that was tough not and then and then you know like releasing control <laughs> that's an issue for me <laughs> i'm working on that but like being able to be like i trust you completely do it and i've i've, I've always been hands-on like with installing work i love it just like you know chris and sergio being there feeling the space you know being able to move things around as you see fit, whereas we don't want to do that here because it's work for everybody else. <laughs> you know, like, like I'm willing to do the work myself, um, but I wouldn't want to make more work um, for anybody else. And I mean that, I know it doesn't feel that way, Erica, but, like, <laughs> but really, um, so yeah, it, it's definitely a, a challenge. But I mean, it turned out beautifully. Like I, I couldn't even imagine. It's so funny because I kept waiting for pictures and I'm like, oh, I was like so anxious. And yeah, I, it's just, it turned out so beautifully. Yeah, it really did. But I think um, for me too, even when I thought about it, I most look forward to working. That's why I do what I do is to work with artists. And we had a lot of <laughs> things planned that didn't quite work out. But I think a lot of it too is the nature of your work is about community and it's about conversations and it's about doing it's about doing the work together. It's about something larger than this. It's it's a vehicle for doing something more and we didn't get to come together to do that. Um, and, you know, even in, and as you said, logistically, you're right, um, you know, let you in on something. Yeah, we, we couldn't fit the rest of the wall. So it was like, we agonized over what, you know, how do we, how do we put this? Which ones do we choose? And, um, you know, or the pockets go here, but that's, and it's things that you don't, you don't think about, but you, it's, it's a simple, hey, Sergio, come on down to the gallery. Could you check this out? Or what do you think? And we couldn't do that um so it made it it made it very um there's a bit of there is something sterile about it is it, it really is it's like you take it and then it's like you take it and you put it in when you see it then that's it and for those that do put it in they trust me they get you know this they're as excited as you are afterward because it's like oh my god you know, we were up, blah, 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 and this, and it came out right. And, you know, and I don't think people quite appreciate that. Um, but yes, they'll, we'll do lots of documentation and we're doing a video to talk about it with the artist. So we definitely have things beyond this, but there's nothing that's really a substitute for us all coming together, you know? Um, and and I, I hope that that, that changes. Um, really soon, but you want to feel comfortable about it too, because there's a different feel even when we have limited capacity. People walk around differently. They don't, you know what I mean? You can see that people are still on alert and that takes away um, from the from the experience too, so. Yeah, I mean, one, I, I totally agree. I think one thing that we have that hopefully people will take away is we, you know, we, we end up sending an extra, what, 200 free posters, I think, that people can take and, and spread out and pass around. And so hopefully that will be a way that we can get some of the work out into the, out into the community. And also the banners that are up on campus as well. So 
there's a couple different strategies that um, we're using now to to um, you know get out out of our out of our houses and out of our space and maybe bring it out into the world even during these tough times. So hopefully that can happen with the posters and um, yeah. Yeah, uh, we've got some ideas of ways that we're going to project images this summer. So, um, well, I think we're, we're going to try and be as, as creative as um, possible. Um, is Chris playing the piano later today? <laughs> I, I have my iPad upside down because my stupid thing doesn't hook in whatever. Yeah, I know. I see it. I see it. <laughs> That's what I was wondering what that was. Thank you. It's like, yeah. it's like a stack on, of, Chris. send us it, out with some tunes. Come it's on. a stack of, it's a stack of Art in America magazines. I have them high enough so I can like put my Art in America magazines up so you can see my face. I have to go like this the whole time. I know it's awkward. Yeah. Anyways, I do not play the piano. Chris, Chris has the worst uh, Zoom meetings. Like he always, always in, 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 in this like telephone mode. <laughs> you know, it's like, he's, he's never muted. He's always talking like you know, it's like making noises, bad background. You know, it, it has it has been a hard hard, hard transition for me. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yes. <laughs> and now plays the piano. Awesome, Chris. That's you know you had me for a minute. I was like. Wow, that's right. great a presentation, you know. Yeah. But that's on Chris John. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. See, we wouldn't be able to do this in person at a real reception, but there you go. <laughs> but this exhibition that we've been working on, well, Anna's been working on it for two years. We've been doing it for about a year and a half. It will be up all summer potentially through the fall of, of the next school year. Uh, cool. Yeah. So um, our goal is at this point, as I said to everyone, uh, tell your friends and family, we have lots of toe tags to put up and to fill out, but the show itself is, is beautiful. And I hope that we're able to have people come in person, but it will be up um, throughout the summer and probably through to the fall. So um, on that note, I want to thank Sergio, Chris, and Trin for joining us this evening. I want to thank um, Anna and her class for joining us this evening and um, just being here to be able to share just a sneak preview of, of what, what it would be like to actually come into the gallery. Um, and as I said, hopefully we'll be able to open it to the public soon when I have more information, but there will be images and um, a video with all of the artists talking about their work and the exhibition that will come out fairly soon. So um, thanks to everyone. This will be recorded and I will put it up on the uh, BCRC YouTube playlist so you can check it out there. But otherwise, thanks everyone. Stay safe, stay well, and I hope to see you in person somewhere soon.